This is introduction to, uh, sorry, this is Solid Mechanics and FEA uh, Eng 5443, the 2018 exam, and this is going to be question 5, uh, which is about a thin-walled cylindrical pressure vessel with a circular cross-section, an internal pressure of P, and an axial load F equals 54 megapascals. Um, cylinder has inter inner diameter of 112 millimeters and wall thickness of four millimeters. Let's just start looking at this. Um, so it says we've got a cylindrical pressure vessel with an internal pressure P and an axial compressive load F equals 54 megapascals. Um, there's some dimensions given. And we're told it's a thin walled and the internal diameter is 112 millimeters, 0.112 meters, and the thickness is 4 millimeters, 0.004 meters. Um, and that's all the information in the question. And it says determine the principal stresses, the maximum in plane shear stress, and the maximum outer plane shear stress in the wall of the vessel in terms of internal pressure P. Um, what I'm going to do first is look up the uh, information about thin walled pressure vessels, which should be somewhere on the formula sheet. Here we go thin cylinder. Um, so we get. Let's just write this out. Sigma sub L equals P D over 4 T and Sigma sub C is circumferential. So that's the longitudinal stress due to the pressure. This is circumferential stress due to the stressor. The due to the pressure is P D over 2 T. We know D and T and P were just given the letter P for that. Um, and then we've got uh, stress due to axial load is going to be sigma equals force over area. Um, note that the stresses due to the internal pressure are going to be tensile. They kind of want to blow the thing apart. Um, whereas the stress due to the axial load, we're told, is compressive. So we'll need to think about that. Uh, let's put some numbers into this. Sorry, I got interrupted. Um, resuming, I guess what we want to do now is to put some numbers in for each of these things. So um, I'm just going to call that sigma sub A. And in this direction, sigma equals um, sigma L minus sigma sub A. So it's the tension. Uh, this this will be a tension because I'm taking a tension and subtracting a compression. And that's going to be P times 0.112 over 0.004 times 4 minus F, which we know is 54 times 10 to the 6, over uh, now outer diameter here is going to be 0 0.112 plus 2 times the thickness, and that's going to come to 0 0.12 meters. So this is pi 0 0.12 squared minus pi 0 0.112 squared. That's the area of the hoop area of the circle with the outer diameter minus area of a circle with the inner diameter. Putting all of this together, um, so that is 7p minus Hmm. I'm 
getting rather too large a number there um, for my stress. Ah, <laughs> that's why uh, the compressive load, although we're given an axial load F, it's actually, I should have seen this right at the start, of course, it's expressed as a pressure. So this isn't really helping me, and this isn't really helping me. And in fact, the number that needs to go in there is 54 times 10 to the 6. Sigma A equals 54 times 10 to the 6. I should have been paying attention to units there. So the um, longitude, total longitudinal tension is 7p minus 54 times 10 to the 6. Similarly, if I look at the circumferential tension, sigma equals sigma c, which equals pd over 2t, uh, and that's going to be, well, let's do it the, the full way, p times 0.112 divided by 2 times 0.004, which is 14p. Um, so that seems reasonable. So now with all these questions, what you want to head towards uh, for situations where you're interested in um, stresses in different, within different orientations, you want to head towards um, a single planar stress element that we can describe. Um, and our single planar stress element here looks like this, with uh, tau equals zero. We haven't included anything that gives us a shear stress. A uh, longitudinal stress of 7p minus 54 times 10 to the 6, and a, a circumferential stress of 14p. Um, at this stage, we're asked for the principal stresses, maximum in plane shear stresses, um, and so on. What we might do is um, the two options are you to, to use more circle or to use formulae. Um, you could go either way. I'm leaning towards using formulae here just because I've not got only numbers. I've got numbers and this unknown quantity P and I feel like maybe um, that might make my Moore's circle slightly more confusing. Um, for example, I don't know. Um, well, I guess my larger stress is going to be 14P and my smaller stress is going to be this. Um, I'm going to stick to the formulae, I think. But if you want to get some practice with Moore's circle, this might give you good practice with Moore's circle. Uh, so let's go straight to the stress transformation section. What we're going to be interested in, first of all, we were asked for principal stresses. And so we can say um, principal stresses. Sigma max comma min equal one half sigma x plus sigma y plus or minus one half square root sigma x minus sigma y all squared plus four tau x y. which in this context equals one half. Uh, sigma x is 7p minus 54 times 10 to the 6 plus sigma y is 14p plus or minus one half square root um, plus four times zero. Or, um, this value here is zero, which equals one half um, 
21p minus 54 times 10 to the 6 plus or minus one half. Um, once I take into account that this term zero, I've got the square root of something squared. So it's just going to be whatever's inside this bracket, which is minus seven P minus 54 times 10 to the six. I could make them both pluses. Um, it doesn't matter because it's going to be plus or minus. Which equals, uh, let's do the plus first, one half of 14p minus 108 times 10 to the 6. That's that plus that, followed by that plus that. Or one half of that minus that is 28p, uh, that minus that is 0. So this one here. Um, Assuming p is positive, this has to be less than this. And so this is the minimum principal stress. I can't remember which spelling I want for principal stress here. That's embarrassing. Uh, well, that's what's in the question. And this is the maximum principal stress. Um, I guess actually what I should do is uh, factor out those halves. So um, I can say the minimum principal stress is 7p minus 54 times 10 to the 6, and the maximum principal stress is 14p. Um, next, what else did the question want? The maximum in-plane shear stress is um, tau max, and that's in the question, um, it's, sorry, it's in the formula sheet, it's plus or minus, it's right up at the top of what I just showed, um, plus or minus one half square root sigma x minus sigma y plus all squared plus 4 tau xy squared, which equals, well, it's this bracket here. So it's 1 half of, um, it, it, there'll be a, a positive and a negative value equally. So I'll take the positive root effectively. 1 half of 7p plus 54 times 10 to the 6, which equals 3.5p plus 27 times 10 to the 6. Um, and all of these things, by the way, uh, are in Pascal's. Just note there that that's in Pascal's. Um, we're asked for the... Um, maximum out of plane shear stress in the wall of the pressure vessel. Um, I'm not sure that that's covered within this module. We're always assuming that the out of strain, out of plane stresses are effectively zero. Um, so I'm going to ignore that bit of the question. And again, uh, I might come back and have a think about it at the end. Um, but for the time being, we'll assume that that is uh, most of part a complete maximum in-plane shear stress um, and principal stresses, and we'll say maximum out-of-plane shear stress is small um, compared to these stresses. Uh, 
Um, and we can see since the vessel is thin walled. Uh, good. Then the question says, uh, determine the maximum allowable internal pressure if the allowable shear stress is limited to 45 megapascals. Um, well, we know that the shear stress, the maximum shear stress, tau max equals, uh, we've already calculated this, 3.5 p uh, plus 27 times 10 to the 6, and that's limited to be 45 megapascals from the question, which means that 3.5 p equals 18 times 10 to the 6, which means that P equals uh, 18 divided by 3.5, 5.14 times 10 to the 6 uh, pascals, or 5.14 megapascals. So part B there is pretty straightforward if you've done part A. We already had an expression for the maximum shear stress in terms of uh, the internal pressure P. Then we were told that the maximum shear stress is limited to 45 megapascals. Um, so that gives us some maximum allowable internal pressure P, which turns out to be 5.14 megapascals. And that is that question.